Well, let's talk about rejection. Uh, rejection was not something I knew very well for a greater part of my life, especially as an athlete. You know, again, it's it's just this hockey stick of success and and growth. And uh, as an athlete, I was constantly walking into situations where things worked out. They just, you know, I worked hard. Uh, I was in the right spot. I was in the right place at the right time. You know, I, I did the work, but things just worked out. Uh, and then my career comes to an end. And then all of a sudden, how things were constantly clicking, opportunities came and uh, those things just went away. And I hadn't changed. There's nothing I was doing differently other than everything that I was up until that point, I no longer was it. I was no longer an athlete. So I had to figure out what my next steps were. And that transition was and is incredibly difficult. The rejection was was uh, something I was not prepared for. That, that resiliency muscle, I had not f- developed as an athlete and, uh, or knew how to connect the dots, I should say, into life after sports. I know I had, I had flexed it during sports. I didn't, re- I didn't connect the dots. And so the first rejection came was uh, when, I had, when I got cut for the first time. And that became real, that football was now a business. And uh, that proceeded to, uh, I proceeded to get cut again. Uh, and, you know, getting numb to that, but still, it didn't feel good because I've never not been cut from a team before. And so uh, that became a harsh reality. Well, once I retired and started living, you know, playing the new game of life after sports, I didn't know how to deal with rejection. And boy, did I get rejected constantly. So here I am shuffling around trying to find jobs. I've got a resume that says degree and athlete and I, I wasn't getting jobs. I was applying, not getting it. Applying, not getting jobs. And so this went on and, and on and on. And over the next decade, taking odds and ends jobs, just trying to make it work. And, and all the jobs I got, I really didn't. It wasn't that that I went through a traditional application process, hiring process. I kind of knew someone, right? Relationships, awesome. But they were more out of desperation. I just, I needed money. I needed an opportunity. And so once I said, I, I'm not, I, I'm going to go out and create something. I'm going to go find something. And fast forward a little bit, I had lost my first business and uh, desperately trying to find work. Uh, 25, 50, 75, 100 applications that just didn't go anywhere. And one of the most humbling experiences that I have, I've had in my life was... I had to go apply to Home Depot and all respect to those folks that, that work at Home Depot and love it. And it just, for me, that felt like an incredible step down uh, that I was going to have to go put myself, you know, it's basic ego, right? Ego's in the way. Uh, so I went to Home Depot. I didn't apply. I left. I ended up going back and applied and didn't get the job. And so I ended up going back and applying again for a different role. Once again, I was declined. And when I called, followed up with the hiring manager and find out what, what the issue was, they said, why are you applying here? You're, you're overqualified. Now, at this point, I had worked various different jobs. I had started a financial company, uh, which beautifully failed. And so, there, you know, there was, I had some remnants of, somewhat, you know, quote unquote, success on my resume, although they weren't all that successful. And then again, I, various different applications, nothing was working out. And finally, just with heartache and with tears and, de- and desperation, my son was still relatively, uh, was a toddler. He, he was young enough where I could put him in one of those, those daddy carriers, you know, put him on my chest. So I locked him in on my chest and we had one car at the time. And so I I put him on my chest and I went walking around our community uh, asking for applications. There was a local deli, there was a, uh, like a ski and board shop, and then there was also at Trader Joe's. And so I went to Trader Joe's and I applied 
and they brought me back in for an interview. Well, uh, before I jump ahead, I, I am walking from, I mean, just humbled. I'm walking from shop to shop down our street asking for work, asking for jobs with my son on my chest. And again, an incredibly humbling experience, especially when I would get denied. Nope, we're not hiring. Uh, you know, nope, we're only looking for seasonal work. The one that brought me back was Trader Joe's. So Trader Joe's brought me in for an interview. They interviewed me and said, why do you want to work here? You over, you're overqualified for working here. We need someone who's dedicated all in on Trader Joe's. And for me, I wasn't. I just, I just needed a job. I just needed a little, uh, a little padding at that moment. And I was honest. They were honest. And they said, you know, thanks, but no thanks. This was a pattern that was consistently hit with me, which was uh, you're not qualified or you're overqualified. Uh, you, you don't have enough qualifications or, gosh, you've got too many. Why are you applying to this? I was stuck in this weird space that I didn't know how to get out of. It was just this spin that any application, any job I was applying for, they would look at me cross-eyed, like, why are you even applying here? Or still look at me cross-eyed going, dude, you don't have the experience to be here. Case in point, I can't tell you. I live, you know, this is living in Seattle at the time. How many times I applied to Amazon and Microsoft, went on in informational interviews, went on actual interviews, didn't get the job. You don't fit the mold, Cletus. You're too entrepreneurial. If, if I had a, if I had a nickel for how many times I heard you're too entrepreneurial, uh, I wouldn't need to be looking for work. So it was just this constant spin, and it was uh, incredibly humbling, incredibly painful, a lot of tears, uh, a lot of stress. And, you know, why me? What's wrong with me? Uh, and, you know, going back to, like, what, how come I can't get the job? I see everyone else getting jobs. What's wrong with me? And so, you know, those, those things obviously have helped mold me. They've helped shape me. They've helped uh, drive me to, to get better. I'm not perfect by any means. Uh, there's a lot of things I had to work on and continue to have to work on. And, but what I know is, I know now that I'm not alone, and I know there's a lot of things that, you know, from, from my past that, that uh, had me making decisions the way I did, had me behaving the way that I did, uh, going through the struggles the way I did, uh, and I tell you, the first time I got on stage in, in, a, in, a, in a paid speaking uh, scenario, I was alive. I felt alive, and someone paid me for it? That's where my life shifted. That's where my speaking career, my coaching career, my training career, it just blossomed right there because I felt at home. I felt alive. I felt like an athlete again. Being on stage, I got the butterflies, getting ready just like I was in preparing for, for competition. Uh, you know, the anxiousness, the excitement to get out there and the challenge. Like I have to go out and, and perform for this group and I have to to uh, you know, deliver a message that is either going to be inspirational or educational or maybe entertaining if, if <laughs> they found it uh, entertaining in some regard. Uh, that launched my career. And from that point on, I thought, this is where I am. This is, this is in alignment. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but I need to follow this path. And there's been a ton of ups and downs through the process. A lot of wins, a lot of failures, a lot of banging my head against the wall going, why am I doing this? But it just is a calling. It called to me. What is calling to you, my friend? There's got to be something calling to you. And oftentimes we have to go through those humbling experiences that just kind of let go and walk through open doors. My dad told me this one time. He says, you know what? Every door that closes, another one opens up. And when it opens up, you need to walk through it. And I've been living by that motto, just I'm just going to walk through an open door, regardless what it looks like, I'm going to walk through it. And this door that I walked through of speaking and coaching and training and working with, with uh, high performers of all shapes and sizes, you know, not just former athletes, but sales professionals and entrepreneurs and you know, people, uh, you know, men who want to do good for their families, do good for, for their partners. You know, I've been in those situations where I haven't been successful in, in a relationship. Uh, and, you know, a lot of things that I brought to those scenarios, uh, brought to those relationships that, that um, you know, caused the challenges. And so uh, I've been there. If you're in that, if you're in that world, I, I've been there and I know it. Uh, and if you need help and support, shoot me a DM. Just, just give me a holler. Let me know that, 
that uh, you know this spoke to you in, in some regard. Uh, if, if I can be of help to just one person, by all means, that, that feels good to me. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, if this, if this again, was something that, that, uh, that talked to you, leave a comment, shoot me a message. You know, I'm here to be of service. And this is, again, this is an open invitation to you to send me a message, for us to have a conversation. What can we do to, to make a greater impact in life than we ever did in sports or in business or whatever area you want to play or you, or you have played? Uh, we, we can make a greater impact together, but it takes a team, it takes a village, it takes a structure, it takes mentorship. I'm here to help you. Thanks for listening.